Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for coming this afternoon. And many, many thanks to Bay Nature for being a fabulous um, resource for all of the Bay Area, uh, broad-based, careful, entertaining, and educational science reporting is something that we really need a lot of, and I'm very delighted to be here. I'm going to talk this evening about River Otter Ecology Project and how we changed the, the map for river otters in the San Francisco Bay Area and beyond in California, and why that matters and to whom it matters. And I'll end up with some videos that all your children will love. So um, hang in there, kids, if you start getting bored with maps, because we'll have some really fun um, otter videos and other animals at the end. So now I'm going to switch over and share screen to my slideshow. And here we go. So River Otter Ecology Project started in 2012. And our purpose is to really engage the public, that's you, in supporting conservation and restoration by linking the recovery of these adorable and fun and fascinating river otters to the health of our watersheds. And we do that through community science, which I'm talking about today, education and research. We begin in one of my favorite places in the world, Point Reyes National Seashore, which is having a very hard time right now due to the fires, but Point Reyes National Seashore will return and hopefully these otters and others in the seashore will do fairly well during the fire. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Once upon a time, there were river otters all over the Bay Area, but by the 20th century, they had really dwindled in number and they had disappeared from large parts of um, the San Francisco Bay Area. Otter decline throughout the world is <laughs> caused by, everyone laughs during this. Usually if, I, if people are out there in the audience, I have to stop talking during this part because everyone's ooing and aahing about how cute the otters are. But otters actually did decline throughout North America during the, by the 20th century for the usual reasons. And those are pollution and loss of habitat and trapping. And it was no different in the Bay Area. But our story tonight is about the unexpected return of river otters to the Bay Area. They're a charismatic, semi-aquatic predator species, and their presence is a hopeful sign of relatively wealth, healthy watersheds. And the story tonight is about how paying attention to what's going on in our own backyards can literally change maps. And that changes management and planning and that can change the world. And we can all participate in that. Now, this all started because I was working on recovery of the intensely um, uh, threatened and endangered coho salmon in Lagunitas Creek. And we, I and my co-founder started seeing more otters in the creek than usual. And we decided to look into what was going on with them. And what we discovered was that there was a huge data gap concerning this species. So we decided to start a project where we would look into what was going on with river otters, use their charm to advertise and popularize their return, link that return to healthy watersheds, back it up with select research, and um, thereby support conservation of watersheds and restorations. Now, a little background. Historically, river otters were all over North America. But by the 20th century, because of the reasons I mentioned before, they had reduced to being locally extirpated and not present in many areas of North America. In 1972, the Clean Water Act passed, and that's our primary federal law governing water pollution. And more, lo more locally, a really positive change happened in 1974 with the Don Edwards National Wildlife Refuge in the South Bay. And um, that protected wildlife, it protected endangered species, and it opened the way for um, much more restoration and conservation in San Francisco Bay. So these changes and um, all the and many other changes paved the way for pollution control, watershed restorations, and habitats became more livable, and many places throughout the country 
began restoration of river otters. However, here's where our story takes a little bit of a um, side leap because in otters were not being introduced to the San Francisco Bay Area and no one was really paying much attention to them until we started our project in 2012. And here, the map that you see, all this pink area on the map, was um, the range map for North American river otters in 2012 when we started our project. This was the, um, the official range map by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. We knew, because we had seen them, that here in Marin County, there were plenty of otters, even though they weren't on the range map. And we figured there were otters in other places as well. So we decided to start our project to find out, first of all, where there were otters. And that's our otter spotter project that I'm talking about tonight. And secondly, we decided to um, do some, some uh, focal study, from some focal research in Marin County. So we have about 200, about uh, 200 kilometers of coast and waterline in Marin, which we monitor and we do studies on. Tonight I won't talk about them, but I promise to do that in the future. And I am talking about Otter Spotter, which is our, um, which is our project modeled on a project that Humboldt State University did up here in Arcata. And they have been looking at um, getting Otter Spotter reports for about 20 years. Our project is nine years old now. We started out regionally just in the um, San Francisco Bay Area, but we've spread out since then to all of California. And we get otter spotters from all over the country, from Canada, Mexico, even um, from other countries. So it really has, um, excuse me, it really has blossomed. So how did we do this? We uh, began with the web portal to co collect otter sightings. And that's what we still use. So if you um, see an otter, you go to our website, you click on the submit your sightings button and it brings you to a fill in form. That's very easy to fill in. Now, I know a lot of you out there have sent in otter sightings, which we appreciate so much. We collect some information on this, um, mostly identifying information, who you are, how can we contact you if we need to, and sometimes we do. Um, when you saw the otter, some more information about how many you saw, adults or pups, and location, behavior, and the two most important things, notes and photos. Because river otters and other marine mammals are very easy to mistake each other in the water especially in the water. So sometimes we get sightings come in with photos that show um, harbor seals or other animals, um, harbor seals, muskrats, beavers even. So photos are really, really important for us to ensure that we are seeing, that you have seen a river otter or something else. Um, the, other, the other thing we really like to get is notes on your sightings. And we like that for a couple of reasons. One is because we're really interested in whether the public is happy to see otters, neutral about it, unhappy, frustrated. Some fishermen don't especially love to see otters around. Um, most people are thrilled to see them. So that the um, notes are something we really enjoy and you can put your own notes in, into your sightings. The other good thing about those notes is that if you look on our website, which I hope you will do after this presentation, go to our maps of otter sightings and you click on the little yellow dot and you can see the notes that other people have written. And they're very fun to read and full of more information about the sighting. So um, those are what we ask for. One more thing I would ask is if you're inputting an otter sighting onto our website, that you um, zoom in on the map as close as you can to get to the place where you saw the otter. Because if you don't zoom, zoom in, then your sighting looks like it's um, somewhere in Iowa. So you really need to zoom into that map to um, where you get to. Otherwise, we email you, which is also fun because then we get more information and we get to know our otter spotters, which for us as people who are doing this research and back at our computers watching these sightings come in, that's one of our favorite things. We love to get to know people who are spotting otters. So 
We've been at this for nine years now. We've had approximately 3,800 sightings. That is a lot of sightings. And as you see from this map, here's San Francisco Bay, some, somewhere under all these yellow bubbles. The yellow bubbles are sightings. The red um, crosses, unfortunately, are mortalities. Uh, river otters get hit by cars quite often, unfortunately. Um, and we have had about 80 reported mortalities over the past nine years. That's just a fraction of all the otters that are killed on the road. They're small animals, they're dark, and they tend to dart across the road without warning, um, like a lot of wildlife does, and they do get hit quite often. Uh, we share our information with agencies and other interested researchers, and we share it most often with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife for a couple of reasons. One is that they partner with us and they do necropsies, animal autopsies, on dead otters that we find. And we're really interested in this because um, we get additional information on otter health. One of the things that we've discovered through these necropsies is that river otters, much like many other um, while most other wildlife in California often carry a very low level of anticoagulant rodenticides, rat poisons, in their bodies. And that is um, a really sad fact that's going on right now. But there's a little bit of good news about that. The, um, there's a bill on the governor's desk right now banning anticoagulant rodenticides in California until such time as uh, the uh, Department of Pesticide can, can reassess uh, the, how harmful they are. So we will send you some information about this in a follow-up note, and I hope that you'll join us in getting in touch with the governor and asking him to sign that bill. It's very important for all wildlife. Now, um, the other organization that we share information with often is the California Roadkill Observation System. As I mentioned, lots of car strikes. The um, CROSS collects car strike information to help inform policy management and financial investment in reducing roadkill. They use these data to study how and why roadkill occurs and what we can do to be to reduce it. So they're a wonderful organization and we love to um, share data with them. Now, one thing I wanna move on to is where we're finding these otters. And as you can see, there are a whole lot of bubbles in um, the North Bay and the South Bay and in the East Bay and then a few less all over California. A lot of that is because we've done so much outreach in the North South south and in the San Francisco Bay Area. Now, what have we discovered? One thing we found out is that river otters really don't hang out in San Francisco very much. And the whole time there have been a couple of sightings in San Francisco, none on the coast south of San Francisco. The, um, the uh, habitat here, especially from Pacifica South all the way down to Monterey, is excellent for river otters. There's ocean there, there's lots of fresh water for them, but they don't seem to have progressed much past Fremont. And um, we have had some sightings, all these little blue dots on the map are river otter sightings that have come into us. However, none of them have had photos with them. And even though we've gone down there and done lots of surveying, looking for otter tracks, otter scat, to find out if there are otters south of um, Fremont, we never have found any sign. And the sightings that have come in have not had photos with them. So we can't be sure those are otters or not. We have them on our map. We have the information. We talked to, to um, land managers all the way from San Francisco down to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. We partnered with parks down there to make sure they know to let us know if they see otters. And so far, none. But we do expect that at some point they're going to be able to get across um, to the rest of the West Coast. Um, so, We've been collecting all this information, and a couple of years ago, we, we submitted our data set to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And here's the original pink 
range of river otters that I showed you a little bit earlier. The Department of Fish and Wildlife accepted our data set and they actually did change the map of range map of river otters in California. Here's San Francisco Bay. All of this darker purple color is the new range map. And this is 4,100 square miles of New River Otter Range. And um, you can now see that the San Francisco Bay Area is all within River Otter Range. And as we know, it's the site of many, many restorations. And it's important for other reasons as well. Here's another map. This is the California Department of Fish and Wildlife's BIOS tool. Really interesting map. It has lots of layers that you can look at. It gives you all kinds of information. And I'm showing you this map because um, I want to talk about what the map means and what it doesn't. it doesn't mean. The green parts on the map are river otter range. It means these are areas where river otters have been seen and reported in the last 20 years or so. And um, it does not tell us the abundance, whether numbers are going up and down. It doesn't tell us what the habitat is like or how many otters are in that area. It just tells us that otters have been sighted and been reported within the last 20 years. So there are a couple of upsides and a couple of downsides to crowdsourcing information, which is basically what this is. Um, the upsides are that it's pretty inexpensive. We can reach a lot of people this way. A lot of people can participate. And that is so important to us. And as, as volunteer scientists ourselves many times, it really matters to us that the work we do means something, that it has, that something happens because of it. When you put your um, sightings into our otter spotter map, that, that information is going to be used. Um, so that's an upside of crowdsourcing. One of the downsides of crowdsourcing is observer bias, meaning we have to be really careful with the information we get and how we use it. Because we could look at it and say, oh, okay, on holiday weekends, there are many, many more otters out. And obviously that's not uh, correct. Uh, that's, that's an observer bias. So we're careful with that. Um, the other problem we have in what we would ideally in the best of all possible wor worlds, we'd have armies of paid observers who went out and systematically observed on a grid with a protocol every year to discover much more population trends, how otters are doing, but that's um, too expensive. We can't do that. So we have crowdsourcing, which is wonderful. And thank you all for that. So we're doing all this work and people say to us, well, okay, this is great. It's fun to know where otters are, but why does it matter? And one of the reasons that I show this photo is because it's sort of the kernel and the nutshell of why it does matter. And part of the reason for that is that river otters are, as, as well as being cute and adorable, they are voracious predators. They eat high on the food web meaning they eat a lot of um, critters that eat other critters. Um, and they uh, are not choosy about their food. They'll take anything that is slow and easy to catch. They hunt in the water, they're mammals. They have high energy needs to stay warm. They don't have that thick layer of fat that a lot of marine mammals have. They have to eat about 15 to 20% of their body weight during a day in order to re retain their warmth and keep their energy up. Now this otter is one of my favorite Point Reyes otters. She lives in Drake's Bay. She's brought up several litters of healthy, gorgeous pups and she is an amazing hunter. I've seen her go out and bring in a gray smoothhound shark, which is a small shark, but almost as long as she is. She had no trouble catching that in the ocean bringing it in, having a big fight with it in a culvert where I saw a lot of tail thrashing on our um, monitoring camera. And then she brought out half of that gray smoothhound shark. She'd eaten the other half and she proceeded to take that final half back to her young who were waiting in the willows. So river otters are um, top of the food web predators and they're also in 
vulnerable to environmental conditions like mercury and PCD, PCBs. And naturally, river otters will be affected by climate change and sea level rise. And therefore, understanding their current range, as well as changes that happen over the next decades, can help us understand how our watershed conditions are changing. Changes in temperature and sea level rise and ocean acidification will probably change the prey species otters can eat, and that may change their habitats and their ranges as well. The kinds of people who need and want to understand river otter range include those who work with natural resources, with restorations, spill response, wildlife rehabilitation, wildlife crossings, as we mentioned, disease surveillance, really important, and of course, and high on everyone's list of things to worry about now, is fire. And finally, everybody wants to see otters and their charisma helps interest everyone in conservation. River otters return to the Bay Area help to remind us that ripples that we sent out years and decades ago are coming to fruition now. And um, river otter return wasn't planned for, it just happened. And conditions for the species that are targeted in restorations like salmon are helpful for the otters and that's why they came back. So conservation is really important on the landscape scale and not just for the endangered species recovery, but for whole biomes and, and for wildlife corridors. And it's gonna become ever more important to um, keep those wildlife corridors and whole biomes safe, not just for endangered species, but also for all of the um, predators and non-predators who come in afterward. And I'm, I'm gonna move on to a couple of examples of um, why, res why restorations are important. Here, at the here on the map, you see the dark purple. Again, that's the new river otter range. The light pink is the old river otter range. And all of these yellows are restorations that are going on in the Bay Area. And the yellow isn't even all of the restorations. It's, it's just um, the California Wetlands Monitoring Workgroup Eco Atlas map. There are others that are happening. Um, restorations are often geared toward endangered species and they can in, expand and enrich habitat as I mentioned for apex predators of those species as well such as otters. So wildlife managers need to understand where otters are especially when they're dealing with an, uh, an endangered species like salmon. For example in Redwood Creek which runs through Muir Woods uh, there is a small population of coho salmon that is just hanging on and is nearly being extirpated. The California De Department of Fish and Wildlife, as well as other agencies, have been working for years to collect salmon fry from those streams, take them to grow up in hatchery, and return them to Redwood Creek to spawn. And this is a last ditch effort to hold on to that group of really important coho salmon that are left in Redwood Creek. Obviously, without understanding that there are river otters in that creek who might come in and prey on those salmon, it's very important. So we keep a good eye on Redwood Creek. We help the National Park Service and um, the folks who are working down there, the fisheries managers, to understand where we've been seeing otters and how many. So restoration, very, very important. To continue the restoration example, river otters, as we know, prey on a really wide variety of species, everything from aquatic insects up to pelicans. They are really not choosy predators, they're carnivores. And some of the species they eat are in fact endangered species like the coho, the top left here, oops. Top left, juvenile coho salmon. Um, the next fish down is a tide water goby. Um, we, so we need to understand how, how many of, how much of these endangered species do waters eat? What are their seasonal diets? We know they eat lots of birds as well. Are they eating endangered birds? 
What about um, local ecological pest species like the European green crab, like the signal crayfish and the uh, red swamp crayfish, which are major pest species in rivers and um, wetlands. They, those, uh, those, uh, those crayfish are very happy to munch on tiny salmon fry. So while river otters will certainly eat salmon fry, they also keep those numbers of, of crayfish that are eating um, salmon down. I'm sorry, river otters are eating the larger salmon, the crayfish are eating the small fry, and river otters are helping to keep those numbers of crayfish down so that um, salmon fry can grow up to be big salmon. So those are um, what we really need to understand and what we're just beginning to start studying is where river otters sit in the food webs. Another part of this, pro this pre-species studies that, that we just did last year and are finishing writing up this fall is work with local high school students on um, that project. It's really important to us to have community projects where students can understand um, why watersheds are important, but most of all where students can understand that science is something that they can do Science is not um, only for egghead people who understand everything. It's something that we all learn and we do, and it's really fun. So we love working um, in community with our students on these projects. And um, next and almost last, as far as why it's important to know where river otters are, is for spill planning and preparation and response, which is a big way of saying, we have uh, rail lines here in green. We have a tanker vessel traffic map in orange. We have rails and tankers carrying toxic substances all over California. Super important to understand what animals are in the areas where these um, spills can happen. For example, about 15 years ago, the Costco Busan oil spill happened where a um, tanker spilled right outside the Golden Gate. At that time, it wasn't known that river otters were present in Marin County. And the uh, uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife had no understanding that they were there. They weren't watching for them. There was no way to understand whether they were affected by the oil spill or not. Even though river otters were seen eating oil birds after the spill, and oil um, sediment was found in their scat post spill as well. So it's super important to know where all kinds of wildlife is so that we can understand how to help them during and after spills. And now we come to fire. I'm by no means a fire ecologist, nor am I a fire expert, um, but I'll tell you what I have gleaned through these fires and some that have come before. Now here you see the fire areas um, and our map of river otter sightings. Half of Na a third of Napa County has burned. Wildlife are displaced, including river otters, and they have to find new territory. A lot of them don't survive the displacement. Many species recover fairly quickly from fires. Um, sometimes they're locally exported and return. I know in the, um, in the fires in, uh, in Australia last year, I'm sure you all have heard of the millions and millions of animals lost. Uh, at the same time as, as having displacement and getting just killed in fires, um, there are those same particulates that are really bothering us and keeping us indoors. They affect wildlife, nowhere for wildlife to go. There's also debris and toxic materials that are caused by fires and escapes into waterways and streams and wells and pollutes them. Heavy metals and other toxins seep into groundwater and into aquifers. Otters who spend so much time in water are susceptible to all of those pollutants. Now, the runoff in the scoot streams will begin to clear up with seasonal rains, but that does still leave groundwater pollutants. On the other hand, here's a little bit of good news, despite all of this bad news. Wetlands, where many of our study areas are, are less likely to burn, 
And when they burn, they do less severely than upland sites. And they can also provide a real refuge from fires for many species of wildlife. And activities such as breeding by aquatic species can sometimes go on with, without too much um, of, of a break during and after fires. Riparian areas, the areas along waterways that are vegetated are super important for species, uh, for many, many species, not just river otters. So as soon as we can get in there, clean up waterways, replant vegetation in areas that, are, um, that have been burned, um, that will help minimize erosion, keep water cool, keep those fish able to breed and do well. That in turn will help the river otters continue to thrive. We are delighted that our Otter Spotter program has provided useful results like this. And we encourage you, especially now, especially after the fires, to please continue to engage with us. Please put your otter sightings in. Let us know if you're, if you're one of the people who lives or walks or recreates anywhere around where the fire areas are. If you see river otters in those areas, please let us know. We're very, very interested in whether otters remain. I know after the past, um, after the past fires, we have seen river otters return to areas where um, they, they had to leave during the fires. So, with that, I'm going to show you some fun videos and I'm going to hope that you're all safe and not evacuated as some of my friends have been from uh, Point Reyes National Seashore. The good news I have about the seashore fire is that it's already 45 to 50 percent contained. We're very delighted with our, um, with our firefighters for helping us there. Now let's move on to one of the most fun things about our project is that we put out uh, trail cameras, which are motion activated and catch, capture all kinds of wonderful information about wildlife. And uh, this is a bobcat. Now bobcats are considered predators of river otters. And let me turn that down a little bit. And as you can see, it sure isn't acting like a predator or a river otter, quite the opposite. But there's a reason for that. Bobcats and river otters weigh about the same. River otters, however, are extraordinarily fierce in protection of their young. And here's her two youngsters who are not worried at all because they know that their mother is going to protect them from that bobcat. Now here's a predator which is of danger to river otters. This is a mountain lion that was seen up in Marin, up in the watershed at, at one of our sites. We saw him a couple of times. He's a beautiful young male mountain lion and he was seen a time or two after that. Uh, cougars, pumas, mountain lions, are definitely predators on river otters. However, they don't always get them, even when they try, even though they can pounce and kill a deer within seconds. They're not so good at getting river otters in the water. A friend of mine was uh, taking photos of a mountain lion across the stream from her. Three river otters came um, floating down, had no idea the mountain lion was there. It pounced, they swam, and they all made it away, which was um, really interesting to me. I wish I'd seen that. Now here, this, river otters also have very interesting social lives. The females uh, do not hang out with the males except for when they're mating. However, related females will hang out together reasonably often. And the related females will sometimes help bring up the youngsters. So this is at Sea Ranch and there's the mom. You can see her helping those little ones up that very steep cliff. And there's her helper female making sure they don't fall down. So this is something we see often uh, as a couple of related females looking after the young together. And sometimes we'll even see related females each with their own pups um, hanging out together for long periods of time. I like this video because it also shows how agile river otters are on land. They're really able to climb well. They can climb trees even. 
<laughs> so this is a, a river otter who was startled by a river otter was startled by a very mangy little fox and uh, it, river otters are not at all afraid of foxes, so it just chased it off. This one is really interesting, taken in uh, at the in Jenner at the mouth of the Russian River. There's an otter on the rocks with a gull that it had killed and was eating, and here's a young harbor seal hanging out, very curious about what's going on. Now, river otters are not very interested in sharing any of their meals, and, the, and they're not usually very aggressive toward each other or toward other animals, unless other animals seem to want to share their meals. They don't like that one little bit. But you can see that little um, harbor seal is very interested in the otter. I, I've seen otters and harbor seals help hunting together in kelp beds in Drake's Bay reasonably often, and they never seem to bother each other. And according to the fellow who sent this uh, video to me, the, the otter and the harbor seal sort of hung out together for about 15 minutes before the otter swam upstream, le leaving the gull behind. So it, it's very interesting. I do see sometimes what looks like fairly playful behavior between river otters and, uh, and different animals. River otters are incredibly playful, especially among their family groups. And apparently the river otter after this um, swam away upstream and left that gull behind. And river otters do occasionally cache their food, which is a really interesting behavior. They'll, they'll eat what they want of it and then they'll put the rest away for later. I've seen them doing this with salmon in Lagunitas Creek and I've seen them here. This is Abbott's Lagoon, it's my study site. And this series of photos is absolutely beautiful by Trish Carney. Um, she was out there one morning and she saw the river otters caching coots in the lagoon. Coots are a water bird and they were catching them and, and um, caching them in there. And the coyote, wily coyote, was of course watching and thought he would get in on the action. So he started pulling coots out and taking them and eating them. And uh, the river otters were not thrilled by any of this behavior. As you can see, this one seems to be getting really annoyed. I can't believe how beautiful these photos are. I never get tired of them. And here the river otter is chasing coyote. Get out of here. This is my food. So you see the difference in size. I mean, the coyote is so much bigger, but the river otter is ex an extremely fierce animal. If coyotes are together in a pack, they could be a real danger to a lone river otter. And I have seen them chase um, river otters in, uh, in Yellowstone. There's a video online if you want to look it up and see it. Um, a pack of coyotes chasing an otter, which did get away in the end. But um, river otters may be small, but they make up for their smallness and adorability by incredible strength and fierceness. So you don't want to mess with a river otter. Really, nobody does. And this uh, coyote is understanding that it needs to save its hide and, and get lost. And that's just not just for coyotes. That extends, as we see here, to... Uh, to uh, bald eagles as well. This otter had, was again in Jenner at the mouth of the Russian River. This otter had brought in a very big fish, it looks like, and, and pulled it up onto the rocks to eat it. And the eagle thought that it would help, um, help cut that up and eat it. And the river otter decided that wasn't a great idea. So I love this 
photo of the otter because you can see how incredibly strong they are. River otters are sleek, they're strong, they have very little fat on their bodies, and again, they need that food to eat, and they do not need a big bird, even like a bald eagle, to take it away. So this otter continued the fight. You can see how much larger the eagle's wingspan is than the small otter, but that otter is not about to back off. And in the end, he prevails. And that um, bird went, sat on a um, ledge to hunt another day. And we also have river otters and sea otters. We have two species of otters in North America, but around the Bay Area, really river otters are the only species that live here. Though we seldom, we occasionally get tourists. So we got this uh, sea otter visiting Drake's Bay not too long ago, a couple years ago, and the river otters were fascinated. They they raced out there to visit their giant cousin, so much bigger than they are, three times their size. And they hung out very curiously. Um, the sea otter ignored them completely. The three of them just circled him and looked at him. There was no aggression, nothing bad happened. They were just fascinated. And then he moved up, up the coast, they followed him. And then the three of them came back and sea otter continued on his way. Um, so that is, to me, very interesting. Finally, I just have to um, show you one more photo. This is, this is my Abbott's Lagoon pair, mother and, and child from this year. I'm hoping above all that those two are doing okay still. Um, I'll go out there as soon as I'm able to visit them and see how things are going for them. Life in the Northern California watershed is a shared proposition. The system is complex and easily unbalanced. Once believed to be extinct, the return of the charismatic river otter, ambassador of our watershed, is a beacon of hope to encourage continuing wetland restoration and conservation. Balancing this fragility is the responsibility of us all. And I don't think anyone can say that better than Peter Coyote. Um, many thanks to all of you for watching. I just wanna say one more thing and move to questions. I'm, I've gone a little bit long. We are holding a mostly water art, poetry, and photography competition. Please check, check it out on our website if you, if you do poetry, art, or photography. Um, it's free to children and uh, you can learn all about it on our website. And now I, I thank our otter spotters and all of our donors who um, help us out with doing our research. 
and I am ready to answer questions. I would like uh, you to check out our website, riverarteryecology.org, Facebook page, and Instagram. We have all kinds of information on there for you. And with that, I'm going to stop screen sharing. And let's look at questions. I see there are a lot. Um, Q and A, there we go. Sunny asks, what is the difference between freshwater and saltwater otters? River otters, North American river otters, are uh, very happy in both freshwater and brackish water and salt water. They need fresh water to drink and keep their fur clean, but um, they like salt water too. The difference, um, the other kind of otter that we have here in the here in California is sea otters. Sea otters are a different species, different lifestyle, can spend their entire lives in um, the ocean. And we'll be doing a talk on a panel discussion on sea otters and river otters and the differences among them in a few weeks in October. Uh, if you are on our mailing list, then we would be happy to give you information about that. And someone asks to put the website here again. The website is riverotterecology.org. And I'll put that in there. River ecology.org. Um, what are the white dots on the otter spotter screen? Um, I'm not sure what the white dots you are asking about, Glenn, are, but if you'd like to um, email me, I will help you. If you meant if you meant the light blue dots, maybe those those are the otter spotter sightings that we were not sure about because we did not get um we did not get a photo with them so we couldn't tell whether they were otters or not sophia asks what's your best guess about why river otters are not able to expand their range south that's a great question and we have questions about it too our best guess is not so much that they can't go south but more that they can't go west there are two major highways um, between Highway 101 and Highway 280, between them and getting to the coast west. There's also um, a highly populated city, San, that whole San Jose South Bay area is so densely populated. So our best guess is that they just haven't made it there yet. And we're hoping that they will continue to be able to make it there. And Robin asks about INAT and reporting observations separately on your site. We would really prefer that you reported to River Otter Ecology Project. We do look at INAT, but it doesn't ask the same questions in INAT that we do. So we, um, we would love it if you would report separately. If that's difficult for you, then we do look at INAP. And um, so wh whichever works best for you is fine. River otters are not the same as otters in Elkhorn Slough. The Elkhorn Slough otters are sea otters. And um, sea otters, as I mentioned, are quite different from river otters. How do otters hold their breath? When otters die, they're able to hold, they're able to close their noses and their ears so that water doesn't come in through their noses. So they hold their breath in that way. Are they related to badgers? That's a great question. Um, badgers and otters are both members of the mustelid family. Um, that includes ferrets, uh, wolverines. It includes a whole bunch of animals that are, um, it's kind of a catch-all really. And most of the animals in that um, family are short, are very muscular, have short legs and fierce carnivores. We do not tag and track individual otters. That's the next question. We don't really feel that we need to do that because it's very invasive to the otters. Tagging and tracking them is you have to capture them. It involves a surgery and, and um, an intraperitoneal implant. 
uh, and we, we can get the information that we need without doing that. They're not endangered, so we're not in a huge rush to do that. We'd rather that the otters lived their um, natural lives and didn't get bothered too much by um, surgeries, if not absolutely necessary. Valerie asks about what we know about Sutro Sam, a river otter that spent several months at Sutro Baths in 2013. I love this question because Sutro Sam actually was so helpful to river otter ecology. We had recently started our project when Sutro Sam showed up at Sutro Baths and he stayed there for several months. We um, were the had just started. I know I knew about three things about otters at that time, and the press was starting to call us and saying, "We we want to know about otters. What about Sutro Sam?" So um, that was really the start of River Otter Ecology's um, getting lots of of um, insights about otters in the Bay Area because so many people heard about us through being on TV and um, that kind of. Uh, outreach that we were able to do. So Sutro Sam hung out there. He, the, um, the Sutro Bass area where he was, was a freshwater seep and it was absolutely full of fat, lazy carp who had been there for many, many years. So Sutro Sam spent a good several months floating around in the bath, eating carp and being thoroughly admired by the public. Um, sometimes too much admired. People were throwing fish to him they were, kept, they were going to Safeway nearby and getting fish and tossing them into the baths because they thought he might be hungry, which was a nice thought, but he really wasn't. And they were also sending their dogs in to swim with Suto Sam because they thought that he might be lonely. Suto Sam was not lonely, but he was a gentleman about the dogs coming in. Pretty soon the Park Service and River Otter Ecology worked together to get some um, fencing up so that the crowds wouldn't bother Sam. And um, we also had some docents down there talking about otters and how to um, respectfully watch otters rather than sending your dogs in to play with them. And um, Sam hung out, he ate all the fish at Suto Baths, and then he started going into the ocean to hunt for um, gulls and bringing gulls into Suto Baths. And after a while, he just took off and um, he, we never heard from him again. He did not phone home. So we don't know what happened to him. Our best guess is that Sam was a young male river otter and um, was out exploring and seeking new territory. Now we are at, uh, 457 at this time and I think everyone is wanting to uh, finish our presentation on time tonight. I want everybody to know that I'm available for questions. Um, email me Megan, M-E-G-A-N, at riverotterecology.org. Um, give me a call. Happy to talk to you about river otters and check out our um, website, our Facebook page and uh, especially check out our benefit contest going on right now. You have about three more weeks to enter. So all you artists out there, we really wanna see your work. Thank you so much. Thank you Bay Nature for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been a great deal of fun. Thank you.